No girls. So what I wanted to start off with is some of the things I did after uploading the first video. Now, I knew something was off about my recording, besides the fact that I didn't know enough to mix audio well, or the fact that I flubbed a lot of words. And so I listened to the videos of YouTubers I watch regularly, because I was wondering how come they don't all use music so it doesn't sound awkward. And oh, it's because they don't really stop talking unless it's to breathe, play a video clip, sound effect, or dramatic pausing. It's the sort of thing that's simple that I never really thought about until I looked for it. Do I get to be Captain Obvious now? Although, I do watch people who mess up constantly through their videos and still enjoy it. It all just depends on the subject matter for the video, I guess. So, I said okay, I'll work on that for the next video I make. Unfortunately, I have a habit of overthinking things and making sure everything I say comes out right, so I'll come up with a whole conversation and quickly forget it, causing me to grasp for words to say. I tried recording this multiple times off the top of my head, but in the end, I just had to type it out as I thought of it and read it back. Moving on from that, I then got some brushes for hair that I may or may not use in the future. Because no, despite what my canvas says, I do not have too many brushes I will hardly ever use. And no, I don't have an overall problem with collecting things. Anyway, I then looked up a tutorial on animating Clip Studio Paint. It was just one little problem. I kind of forgot I have Pro and not EX, so that means I can only do around a second of animation or 24 frames, which is nothing for animation. Now, I still could have went with the original plan for this video and practice animation coloring, but I was like, until I figure out a workflow for animation or what program I'm going to use, I'll hold off on it for now. Still though, I went looking for YouTubers that do animation processes and styles I like for when I'll need it later. Lastly, you won't see in this video, but I changed around the canvas finally a bit because I'm a lefty and also I don't know how to quickly access stuff in Clip Studio Paint yet or the many shortcut keys there are despite having it for a bit now. As for what happened in this week's train wreck, I decided to practice art for some odd reason. And yes, I knew cats didn't have arms or dogs for that matter, but I didn't want to just you know, practice male and female R's because that's what most people go to. I wanted to do something different, something outside of what I usually do. Though still having some prior experience, I went with cats and dogs or I guess a dog, some robots as I'm big on mechas, and an alien. Which turns out I don't have many alien aliens in my thousands of references. Lots of humanoid ones, which means, yeah, maybe some other time I can dive into that. The robot arms went better than I thought it would with how iffy I can be on oddly positioned squares. Or, I guess, squares in general. Oh, well, this is where being all over the place while learning how to draw things pays off. Kinda. Yes, I also recognize that the alien arm is not the most atomically correct. And no, despite what you think you see, I did not try to fix it a little. Only to think to myself, don't touch it, you'll only make it worse. So, next, to have something cool for the video, I had the idea of practicing some arms of characters that for the most part have recognizable arms, and I wanted to just freehand it and have some fun with it, but oh, potato sauce, I didn't know. I tried with the first one being cat, and nope, did not work at all. In my opinion. Oh wait, the only opinion. Then, after that, I was like, no freehand for the next one. So why in the multiverse did I pick a 3D render of KH3 Sora to use as a reference? I'll tell you. It's because in my excitement, I forgot I don't have enough skill points to attack this challenge and win. Also, as you can see, if you haven't went blind yet, I'm still actively trying to figure out how to pick the right color for things. I learned better through trying it out instead of learning why things work the way they do through explanations. So I tend to use the color picker and grab from the reference reference piece I use, not very productive, as not only do I not learn how to choose through trial and error, but as you may know, the colors of the end product may not be what they started out with, or there's so much blending that you can't find the original color. That's a big area for me to improve on along with the bane of my existence, hands and hair. But with that, I'll see you next time as I continue to wonder why I keep pushing the upload button.